if we open up our app, we have kind of an interesting structure here. You might notice that I have this app directory that has models, views, and controllers in it. We're going to be really, really organized about this application. We're going to keep our controller file in the subdirectory controllers. We're going to put our tweet model in the subdirectory models. And just like you've seen so far, all our views will go in the subdirectory views. And it's conventional to wrap up those three directories in yet another directory called app. Kind of keep that stuff separate from things like our config.ru, from things like our public folder, which will actually put some style sheets in to make things look pretty, from things like our config directory, from things like our DB directory. So this structure, app controllers, app models, app views, is something that you're going to see all the time moving forward, and that's how Rails is set up as well. And just like we were talking about uh, yesterday, there's nothing like special and magical about having done this. There's no amazing new functionality that I get from having put models, views, and controllers under an app folder. It's just organized and conventional. Yeah, Kalita. Uh, there should be a model folders there under app. You guys don't have one? Huh, let me see. I have one. CD app ls. That's weird. App. Huh. Uh. Okay, go ahead and make a models directory. I think as long as we have, you guys have a DB directory, right? DB and then migrate under that be good to go. No? Weird. Okay, let me try that again. Oh yeah, I see that. Let me make a change and see if I can trigger this to happen. Okay, give me just a moment, you guys, to make sure that this gets up to date for you. Let's just try if we can make this as simple as possible. Go ahead and create a DB directory and create an empty directory called migrate under that. That should be fine. And hopefully that will carry us through. Okay, so you notice that we have our, our MVC file structure. We have app, we have controllers, views, and models. We have a DB folder. We have a migrate folder under there. There's nothing in the migrate folder. And we are designing a brand new application totally from scratch. There's absolutely nothing in it. So when we're designing a brand new application totally from scratch, where do we like to start? Should I start by building out my HTML views and giving my users something nice to look at? Francis is shaking his head. What should I start with? Uh, I actually don't want to start with my controller either, because right now, do I have any data to display? Do I have a database? Do I have a table? Do I have a model? No. So what might I want to build first? What were you going to say? Yeah, we kind of have our domain model, right? It's super simple. Tweet. Full stop. No users, just tweet. So I know my domain model, and Cliff is absolutely right that that's where I want to start out, just kind of designing the different pieces of my program. So now that I'm ready, I know what my program looks like. It's going to just have tweets in it. What should I build first? 
What were you going to say? What does the tweet class connect to? The database. Do I have a database? Not yet. What should I do first? Let's run our migrations. Let's build one. Um, so let's go. We'll do it manually. Do I have to bundle install? Bundle install. In DB migrate, we're going to create a file. We're going to call it 01 create tweets table. I'm going to make it nice and big so you guys can see. That's slightly too big. Really insanely big. Okay, that's better. Okay, anybody want to walk me through our migration? Let's try to knock this one out pretty quickly. How about Jason? Can you help us define the migration totally from scratch? I have nothing in this file at all. Mm -hmm. uh, create tweets table. Mm -hmm. You got it. That is not how you spell migration. Awesome, continue. We actually need to wrap it in the yep, dev change, and then we can run create table tweets. Take it away, Jason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll go message. And that's actually the only attribute we want for now. We're going to kind of punt on this question of users and usernames. Super, super simple. We've done this heaps of times already. Okay, let's make a model that will connect to that table in the models directory as I have it and as you guys created it. We've got nothing in it, so I'm going to make a new file. Tweet.rb. We'll go class tweet, and it will inherit from active record base. Do I need anything else in this tweet class right now? Nope. Already, if I run my migrations, I'll be able to make tweets. They will be able to be saved. I can find them, destroy them, and they'll have a message attribute all through the magic of active record. So let's see if we can run our migration and make some tweets. And I cannot because of reasons. You have a database. Ah, uh, you've already activated. Oh, this was the problem I think you guys were having yesterday, right? I'm going to see if I can just kind of short circuit this. Cool. Awesome. Got a tweets table. Okay. Any questions? How is it accessing a database? Um, I already have, as you guys should as well, unless there's more weirdness going on with this directory, um, my config file sets it up. Yeah. Jason. DB registry. Um, let's see. So I do not need them here because we made it really simple with this active record based established connection. We forego a lot of the setup that goes into it just to keep it really, really simple here. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I hope that worked. I think it worked. I made my migration. We went through the song and dance a little bit yesterday. What do I want to do now to make sure that that worked? Yeah, Francis. We absolutely can. Oops, I want to do bundle exec, great console, and let's see if we can make a tweet. Tweet.new message sup can I save my tweet I can can I get all the tweets I can looks like we're good does a tweet have a message it does beautiful our database is up and running so again I'm gonna kind of iterate on this a lot until you guys are sick of hearing me say it always just kind of like check your work as you go right we made our migration we made our model immediately go into the console and just kind of see how things work it feels maybe kind of tedious and unnecessary when you have an application that's as simple as this. We just have a tweet model here. But the more and more that you guys are building out complex applications with lots of different relationships between your various models, the more that you want to spend time getting a feel for those relationships, a feel for the models, before you go on and build routes, build views, and kind of take your application further than that. So this is a step that I always want to see you do. Make your migration, make your models, see if it worked. Play around with the data make sure that you can use the code that you've written. Any questions right now? Okay, cool. Let's go into our controller. 
which is here in controllers, application controller. And let's keep it really simple at first. I want to build the route and the view for looking at all the tweets. So what kind of a request is that? Get, post, put, destroy. Get, yeah, awesome. What did we decide to call it? Tweets. Okay, Mahadi. How do I get all the tweets out of the database? I tell it to go to my view file called tweets? I want to just, like, even outside of the realm of Sinatra, right? How do I get all the tweets out of my database? Tweet that all, awesome. Second question for you, follow-up question for Mahadi. How do I take all these tweets and make sure that my view has access to them? Mm -hmm. But there's, a, there's only one way to have information in the controller that you can sort of pass to the view. Do you guys remember what that is? Yeah, Abby. Absolutely, let's call it at tweets because that's what they are and we'll set them equal to tweet.all. Cool, also currently there is nothing in our views. What should we name our view file to show all the tweets? What do you guys wanna name it? Yeah, I like tweets, whoever whispered that. So we'll say ERB tweets. And inside of the views directory, we'll create a file tweets.erb. Okay, and if you guys recall what we did yesterday when we were playing around with building out routes and bringing them to view pages, before I even worry about like the content of this page, how am I gonna iterate, what's it gonna look like, can I get here? Can I run the server, visit slash tweets, and end up on this page? Let's find out. I'm gonna run shotgun. And I'm gonna visit localhost 9393 slash tweets. And there's nothing here. Yes, there is. Hey guys, you did it. Awesome. You're so smart. All of you. Cool. Questions so far? Okay, so I queued up all the tweets in my controller. I've got this at tweets variable. And I want to list them out on the tweets page. First, let's make it look a little less shitty. Um, we're going to say that this is the tweets index page. That's just the name of the page, so I'm putting it in an H1. And maybe we'll start like a list of all the tweets. How do I iterate over and display all the tweets in my ERB file here? Does anybody want to take a stab at that? How about someone who... Andrew. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's put them in an LI, and that way we're going to make an LI out of each tweet. Cool. Awesome. I'm going to put them in a numbered list so that it's a little less confusing to look at. I'm going to say each with index, tweet, index number, and I'll do uh, i plus one because indexes start at zero. Troy. Um, when this runs to create the list of your tweets, yeah. is, it, is, it, is, the, is the browser like rendering? No, it's actually getting run server side. So the server, i.e. your Sinatra application, is running the code in this file so that all the Ruby is like evaluated building out one long string of HTML, having evaluated those Ruby statements, and then sending that as the so web the response. Is exactly, okay, that yeah. Mm -hmm. So your Sinatra controller isn't responding with Ruby to a web request just because there's Ruby in this file. This file is gonna get run first. All the Ruby will be executed so that you get like the result of having executed all that Ruby. Get a long string of just pure HTML and text, and then that's what gets sent as a response to the web request. Okay, let's see what happens. That looks beautiful, our one tweet is totally there. It's a really eloquent tweet. It's very profound, I think. Yeah. Cool, all right. Um, why did I start my iteration inside the UL as opposed to what would happen if I did this, let's say? Put it here and here. How many ULs would I then be building? 
yeah, as many as there are tweets. Instead, I want to start the iteration inside the UL, the unordered list, and just use the iteration to make one list element out of each member of the tweets collection. Cool. Questions on that? Yeah, Jim Tian. Yeah. Not that I'm aware of. You have to go one line at a time, which is why I highly recommend inputting some sort of shortcut or snippet to make the ERB tags less of a pain in the ass, right? Yeah. Any other questions before we move on? Cool. I would love to have somebody be able to click on this tweet and have it kind of link them to a page where they're looking at the show page of that tweet or looking at just that tweet. This isn't a great example of wanting to do that because the tweet just has a message which has like a couple of words in it. So it doesn't really feel like it's really necessary to give each tweet its own page to occupy. But you can totally imagine that being the case for a lot of other applications. So let's say you're looking at a list of dogs on a pet adoption website. You want to be able to click on the name of a dog and kind of be taken to that dog show page where you can see it's breed and its age and whatever shelter has it up for adoption. Uh, similarly with like Facebook, right? You could be looking at a list of all your friends. It's not showing you their details. It's showing you like their names and pictures. And I should be able to click on AJ's face and then go to AJ's profile page, right? Yes, there you go. Um, so even though there's not like a ton of functionality that we're going to get from putting each tweet on its own page or being able to link from this list to a tweet's own page, we can understand that that's a pretty common flow in an application. Any questions on that idea or why we want to do that? Cool. So let's define our show route first, the route that we're going to define to show one tweet. Can anybody walk us through it? What type of request is it? I want to look at one tweet. Get, post, patch, what, Daniela? Absolutely correct. Cool. And what's the URL that we decided on? What makes sense? I'm going to roll that back a step. Different question. Does this URL need to be static, i.e. it will never change? Or is there a piece of this URL that will change depending on which tweet we want to see? Change. What piece of it will change? The ID. So somewhere along the way, we need this dynamic segment. It's called for ID. And we're going to talk a little bit more about dynamic segments in a moment. So is there any reason why I might not want it to be just get ID, get 7, get 8, get 9, get 10? Yeah, what if I add users at some point, which I want to, how will my application know whether I'm trying to look at user number 7 or tweet number 7? It wouldn't, right? So what can I do to this URL to make it really clear that I want one tweet? as opposed to one user, one dog, one cat, whatever. What do you guys think? Yeah, tweet slash ID, do end. Cool, I'm not gonna do anything with this block of code yet except put a binding.pry in here. I wanna be able to click on a link to one tweet and hit this binding. That's like the granular level that I wanna break this down to, Daniela. This one right here? Or you mean, yeah. Well, you can add more than one dynamic segment to a route. And I think you guys probably saw this in one of the labs where you were doing like, um, say something a certain number of times, right? You had like, say slash number slash some phrase. You can add as many dynamic segments to a route as you want. But for our purposes, we want to be able to know that somebody's requesting one tweet. So we're going to put tweets before ID. Let's say, though, that I wanted to be able to edit this one tweet. I can add something after the dynamic segment, and we're going to talk more about this later. So your URLs and the routes, the way you define them, are actually pretty flexible. We're just following a set of conventions here. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. So then if we wanted to build a route to get one user, you might define it like this, so that when somebody types in tweets slash seven, It'll hit the code on line 15, and we know to find one tweet. But if somebody types in user slash 7, it would hit the code on line 19, and we would know to find them one user. 
So this is part of the beauty of Sinatra and the way that we can define different routes that can match actual URLs as opposed to in Rack, you had that super, super long call method where you had all these if conditions looking at the request. Oh, if they wanted a user, we'll do that. If they wanted a tweet, they'll do that. But this takes care of it for us. Because we defined a route that says tweet slash seven, when somebody types into the browser, www.rtwitter.com slash tweet slash seven, it will match up to this line of code, and the code in this block will run. But if somebody types in www.rtwitter.com slash user slash seven, it would match up with the code we've defined on line 21, and the code in this block would get run. So that's how our application will be able to respond to different types of requests with the right information that the user wanted to see. Mahadi. Mm -hmm. There's just this one controller. We only have tweets. There's no users. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Later on, do you end up like putting all your guests in like a big group by which? Yeah, um, you're gonna end up grouping your routes based on the model that they are sort of for, right? So if I have a set of routes that are for getting or updating or creating tweets, I'm actually gonna create a totally separate file and call it the tweets controller. If I have a set of routes that are just for users, get me all the users, show me one user, update a user, I'm gonna create a totally separate file and I'm gonna call it the users controller. We're gonna build up to that. We don't have to really worry about that now. Cool, all right, any other questions? I think I saw Logan with a hand up. No, JJ. That's a really good question. We didn't have to do this before, right? right. Anybody wanna take a guess at why we need this? I have a slightly different file structure. All of a sudden, all of my really important things are inside this app directory. But before we had views in the top level, right, just hanging out with all of our other files, we also know that when we run Shotgun, what is Sinatra looking for? What file is it looking for? Config.ru, and that's in the top level of the directory, right? So we already know that Sinatra has some very strong conventions about where it's looking for specific files. When you run shotgun, it's gonna look for the config.ru file in the top level directory. You also asked me a question yesterday, one of you guys, about why we didn't need to like require view files when we were setting up our Sinatra app. Somehow Sinatra just like magically knew about the views directory and was able to render those files. Sinatra does kind of magically know about the views directory and is able to render those files if you've kept it really, really simple. So the Sinatra library is automatically looking for a views directory that's in the top level of your application. So not here underneath an app folder. If we want to move it to be a little bit more organized, we have to tell Sinatra where to find the views directory. Gentian. Pirates. Yeah. And then outside of that, it's still within the views directory. Yep. So if you're going to put your views directory somewhere other than the top level of the whole application, in other words, if I want views underneath app, I have to tell Sinatra where to find the views directory. But then once I've done that, anything within views is fair game. Since it knows about views, it will know about anything within views. But I still have to tell ERB when I'm rendering it that, oh, hey, it's not tweets at the top level of views. It's like my directory slash tweets. So if I were to nest, I think you had like something under a pirate subdirectory. Let's say, for example, that you had views, pirates, my pirate or something. You would have had to tell ERB that you were rendering some file that was inside a subdirectory of views. So you wouldn't do that up here. Here you just tell Sinatra where the whole views thing is located, but if you have subdirectories inside views, you just tell ERB where to find the file. Does that make sense? Cool. Any other questions? What? Oh, the public folder we haven't really talked about. This is where you put your assets if you have some CSS, if you have some JavaScript. Similarly in Sinatra, it's expecting to find the public folder um, actually, it's expecting to find it here. I wouldn't be too surprised if we could get rid of that, but we're not going to play around with it right now. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. Awesome. So let's see if we can create a link to a specific tweet and then arrive at our route and hit a binding.pry. 
So we're going to list those links in the tweets index. Right now I'm just rendering the message. Could I make this a link to that tweet? Can anybody walk me through it? Francis, you want to try? Mm -hmm. Let's do A like that. OK, awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not actually string interpolation. I think you need oh, this, right? right, right. Yeah. Um, awesome. Cool. And then inside the A tag, we'll put the message. Cool. So we're going to come back to this in just a sec. Let's just make sure that it worked. Refresh. And now that's a link. You can see if you look at the very bottom, it brings us to tweet slash one. So we need to craft a link that's tweet slash the ID of whatever tweet we happen to be iterating over. And we can get that ID by really simply asking that tweet, hey, what's your ID? So you can think of this as like string interpolation. We want tweets slash this tweets ID. But you can't use string interpolation in an HTML file. We have to use our ERB tags in order for this to render the ID number. Questions on that? Yeah, Mary. Do you have any Uh, so we've used it inside the A tag. Is that what you're kind of asking? Like, can I do that versus just putting it as we were before? So when we were building this out before, we had these A tags in between these two LI tags, right? Is that really that different than putting it inside the href attribute? It's kind of all the same. Yeah. Any other questions? OK, cool. Mahadi, did you have a question or you're just thinking? OK. So I am going to click this link. Where does this link take us? Where's the first place we're going to go? Yep, it's going to go to our controller, and it's going to look for the action or the route definition that matches the get request to tweet slash the tweet ID, which is on what line? 16, awesome. So we should hit our binding.pry when we click this link. Let's see. Nothing's happening. That's a good sign. I'm here. I'm here. Um, what do you guys think is going to happen when I hit params? And hit enter. What do we expect to see? What type of data? A hash. Awesome. What should be a key of that hash? ID with a value of? We only have one tweet. One. Awesome. Here it is. Let's talk a little bit about params before we move on, though. What are params? What do you guys think params are? Params? Parameters. Cool. Yeah, they're definitely parameters. Um, our dynamic segment could also be referred to as a parameter of our URL. Cool. Very literal. Alex? Yeah, any dynamic segment of our URL is going to get turned into key value pairs of our parameters. Parameters are basically, it's a hash that contains information that describes the web request that was just made. So if I just made a request to tweets slash one, by the time I get to that controller action, that route, I have params. And the params describes the request to tweet slash one. If I make a brand new request to slash tweets, params would no longer have any information about the previous request to tweet slash one. It would only have information about the request to slash tweets. There's other stuff in here, right? I see captures. I see splat. I don't care about this information. This is just some extra information that Sinatra is going to include in there for us. So we don't really need to know too much about params right now, like where they came from or how they're constructed. Sinatra constructs it for us, and it is a hash that describes information about the web request we just made. It will never hold information about older web requests. You will only ever get info about the web request that you just made that brought you to that controller action or that route, Troy. So since, this is a little bit separate from this, but uh, since you're just sending string to HTML that someone else's browser, in this case our own browser, any browser can stop. They would need to include or like require they, the program that's running the application has no bearing on what the other person sees in terms of them needing to have things installed. I don't understand your question. Well, so like when we when we were building like little apps and programs before, it wouldn't run unless you like bundle and install and then add all the right gems required and yada yada uh -huh. yada. Whereas this is just outputting HTML, so the user who's interacting with your app or your website doesn't right. have to worry about 
what Sanat was doing or like No, what totally. Asked yeah, or, because they they're not they don't need to and once you deploy your applications that it's hosted on a server that's like always running and putting it on a real domain on the real internet, do you have to like install Facebook every time you want to go to facebook.com? No, yeah, so it's going to be hosted on some server out there in the world, which is kind of just like when you run it on your computer, except some computer out there that's always <coughs> running. Um, you just visit that URL, that application is being served on that port, and you interact with it. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, do you guys have any other questions about params? Some questions? Yes, no? Um, so we are, we've already seen that some data that gets into our params comes from dynamic segments, right? Any dynamic segment I define for my route ends up as key value pairs in my params. What's another way to get data in params? This is a get request. What about a post request? Yeah, Gentian. Uh, Absolutely. So the, if you look at the params that come from submitting a form, the content of those params is determined by what? Big picture, not even specific. The content of your form. That's another way to get information into your params. In a get request, if we're visiting a URL that has a dynamic segment, our params will be filled up with key value pairs based on whatever our dynamic segments were. In a post request, our params will be filled up with key value pairs populated from our form. That's how data is actually posted. And we're going to take a closer look at that in a moment. But right now, let's find the necessary tweet. How do I find the tweet that this person requested? Veronica, can you help me out? Absolutely. And what argument do I need to give it? Mm -hmm. okay. Params ID. Awesome. Does it matter if I do this or this? Not that. That matters. This? Does it matter if I use a symbol or a string for my parameter keys? Let's find out. Let's see if this works. We know that params at a key of ID as a string works because we're looking at it right now. We got it. Let's see if it would also work as a symbol. And it also works. That's kind of weird, right? If I define a hash, I say hash equals name Sophie. I see that my hash has a key of name as a symbol. So if I tried this, it's going to give me nil because there's no key of name in quotes. But notice that params didn't care about that. That's really interesting. Does anybody know what this is called? This is a special type of hash called hash with indifferent access. Sinatra builds the param hash as a hash with indifferent access. Same thing goes in Rails. They just want to make it as easy as possible for you. You don't even have to care if it's a string or a symbol. You don't have to remember. You get to use your own personal preference. Yeah? Um, yes, you can. It's just a class, hash with indifferent access. Yep? Don't iterate over it and like try to dynamically do stuff with key value pairs because hackers. What if somebody figures out how to change your form on the page to add something that's like a key of command and a value of drop all tables from the database or something? And then you just dynamically execute that. Yeah, that would be bad, right? So we want to know which param key we're trying to work with and only work with those keys by name. It's a little more tedious, right? You have to maybe write some more code, but there are some more elegant ways to get around that by the time we get to Rails. Yeah, so Colby. That's why we did that in the basketball team lab. Yeah. yeah. I would say the real reason we did the basketball team lab, I mean, I guess your params and your web requests could become pretty complex, especially as you build out more and more complex forms. But we especially did that lab because of the way that you receive data if you're working with an API, like the Star Wars API assignment. It was like pretty true to life. You might not necessarily be building a super large Star Wars related application, but you'll be building large applications with lots of complex data, so you'll have to iterate over nested hashes like that. Yeah, and params is a good use case for it. Okay, so we've got tweet.findParamsID. That gets us our tweet, and we know that this works, and we're going to go and put it in our controller action. So this is another workflow I really like. I'm going to define my route. I'm going to immediately put a binding.pry in it, and I'm going to click the link and get to there. 
Then inside the pry, inside the terminal, I'm gonna run the code that I think I need until I know that it works. It did get me the tweet I wanted. Once I have that working, I'll copy and paste that code into my controller action. I don't like to do anything blind. I don't want you guys making assumptions about the code that you're writing. You have this really powerful tool, pry, use it to look at what you're doing. Cool, okay. Um, and then I probably want to render some sort of page where I can look at one tweet. You guys want to name that page for us? We can name it whatever we want. Whatever we want. There are no wrong answers. Yeah, I would kind of maybe think about nesting my views under a subdirectory called tweets, but we're not going to do that for now. So for now, I'm going to call it, I kind of don't want to call it show because we could get users in there. I'm going to call it show tweet. Personal preference, I choose show tweet. So inside views, we'll create a new file, showtweet.erb, and we'll come from our application controller. What do I have to do in order to get this one tweet into my view? The only way I can pass data from a controller to a view? All together now? Thanks, guys. At tweet equals tweet.find. Um, there are not. So this is also totally valid. You can go either way. You'll actually need the quotation marks if you're putting subdirectories in your views, which we're not. But if I were doing something like tweets slash tweet, yeah, totally interchangeable with just the colon. Yeah. Um, okay, so I've got my show tweet. I'm going to create an H1. Okay, didn't work. And I'm going to call it my tweet show page. So that's what we call this concept of looking at one tweet, a show page. And I'm just going to create a paragraph, and I'm going to use ERB to say at tweet dot message. Cool. Now we're going to remove our binding. We'll make that request again for real. And we'll see if we get there. Awesome, we're here. We routed all the way there. Yeah, Mahadi. No worries. Yep. Yes. Well, that depends. It's totally normal to have a set of instance variables that you might be setting in a controller and passing down to a view. Um, but if I wanted to also show this tweet's user in an app where I had like tweets belonging to users, how do I ask a tweet for its user? So in the realm in which I have like a user model and a tweet model, and a tweet belongs to a user, and I have an instance of tweet, what method can I call on tweet to ask it who its user is? What? So if I, if I have an instance of tweet, you guys want to help out Mahadi? I have an instance of tweet. We're in the universe in which I have tweets and users. Tweet belongs to a user. What method do I call on tweet to ask it who its user is? Tweet.user, cool. So a lot of the information, if you're like, well, I want more than a tweet. I need more info on this page. You'll find that a lot of that information might be even contained in the tweet itself. So I could say tweet.user to get its user, tweet.user.username, tweet.user.email. So on the one hand, totally normal, and you will define more than one instance variable to pass down to a view. But it's also the case that some of those instance variables, you can call methods on them to get more information. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Cool. Any questions before we build our first ever form for the first time ever? Okay. Cool. Let's do it. So in order to submit a form, Jacob? Oh, it's just... Oh. In order to submit a form, wake up, a user needs to be able to fill out a form. In order for a user to fill out a form, we have to be able to show a user that form. So we're going to build the route that brings the user to the page with the form on it. As soon as I plug this back in, which is really not working at all. That looks pretty bleak. Beautiful. OK. Let's build the route that brings the user to the page with the form on it. What's a good name for that route? 
We're making a new tweet. Abby? Post. So we definitely need a post route that's going to receive the request that happens when we submit the form. But first, we just need to bring the user to a page that has the form on it for them to fill out. It is definitely get request. Awesome. And what might you want to name that route, Abby? So we can't create one yet because we need to let the user fill out a form, right? So we need to bring them to a page that has the form for the new tweet on it. Yeah, we'll do tweets.new, or not tweets.new, tweet slash new. And this will bring the user to the page. Bring the user to the page with the form for a new tweet so that they can fill it out. So let's make a file and we're going to call it new tweet in our views. And I want to see, can I even get here? Did I define this route correctly? So can I go to tweet slash new? And I cannot. Couldn't find tweet with ID new. That is really interesting. What is going on? Why would it be looking for a tweet with an ID of new? Yeah, Troy. Because it doesn't know. It takes any argument you put into your symbol of the tweets. This does, right? This route. Yeah, that mm -hmm. route. So it doesn't know that it's You're absolutely correct. So when we send a web request to a specific route, that request is going to arrive at our controller, and then it's literally going to go down the list of routes that you've defined. And as soon as it finds a match, or what it perceives to be a match, you're done. It's going to run the code in that block. So we gave it this dynamic segment, tweets with a dynamic segment of anything that we want to follow tweet. Does our app know that the word new is not an ID number? It doesn't. So it's going to hit line 16, and it's going to think it found a match. How do we solve this problem? Let's switch the order. Beautiful. Let's try that again. We're here. All right. Any questions on that? Yeah, okay. Logan. So in the initial order for get tweets, it continues uh, beyond that because there's no slash. There's no dynamic segment. Exactly. Yep. Uh, we'll do Jacob and then Mahadi. Unless that answered your question. Uh, okay. So if you have like a dynamic route defined, you always want it to be at the end because it's going to cover every other exactly. scenario. And yep. then can you, I mean, could you conceivably just set a conditional and like. Like I in, if I wanted to put new, if I wanted yeah, to put this first, like, I could say if params id equal equals new. But then there's going to be other ones, right? There's going to be maybe like tweets update. I'm just spitballing here. Yeah. Tweets destroy. Those aren't exactly right, but you get the idea. So then this one route is all of a sudden responsible for like any number of other routes that might be similarly named. Yeah. And that gets really messy. But the beauty of Sinatra is in its pattern matching. And I can build specific routes that match specific URLs as long as I order them correctly. So that's what we want to do. Yeah, let's do, I think Mahadi had a question, and then Troy? Yes, sure. Troy. Uh, this is, so if it was in order, I don't know how you want to do this, but if you put a conditional outside of the get method? Not a thing. Nothing? Not a thing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right, so let's build our form. This is exciting. Building forms, if you ask me, like really sucks because you have to remember how to do it every single time. I always look it up, so that's what we're going to do. HTML form. Beautiful. So we need a form opening and closing tag. We have input elements. Form, input type, text, name, form, etc. Let's start with that. Opening form tag. We'll do input. That didn't work. Input tags are self-closing, I want to say, right? I don't need a closing input tag. The people that did the HTML pre-work are nodding. Everybody else is like, I don't care. <laughs> cool. And we'll say, um, let's see, we'll give it a placeholder. That gives us like a default value. We'll say, enter your message here. And we'll give it a label as well, so there's a little label next to the input fields. And we'll give it an H1 that says, that's not what I wanted to do, new tweet. Yes, I do. Oh, 
Okay, let's see if we can go look at our form. Looks pretty good. Uh, what's my form missing? Can I submit this form? No, I don't have a submit button. Let's go to it. Okay, and we'll do, I'll put a little BR here. And we'll do, can anybody walk me through how to build the submit button? Is this valid if I just give it a button and I say submit? Now it looks like I have a submit button, but nothing happens. Yep. Type equals what? Submit. Awesome. Let's see. Yeah, I actually prefer that. Input type equals submit. And then let's make this self-closing. Refresh. I do. Do I? I don't think so. I think we're good. Yeah, cool. So I still have my submit button. So input type equals submit will give you something that looks like a button and that will actually act like submitting your form. Something that my input is missing, well, it's missing a couple things, but I do want to give it type text, just an HTML thing to make our form nicer. I'm going to be using this text field as a text field, so I should tell it that. Cool. Okay. Let's see if I can submit my form. Let's make this a little bit bigger. I wonder if this will work. Do you guys think this is going to work? Does my form know where to submit this? No, nope, nothing happens. It's confused. It's super confused. You can actually see. It's asking me. What? I don't know. Okay, cool. How do we tell our form where to submit? We need two pieces. When we define a route in a controller, there are two parts to that route definition, right? This part and this part. What's the first part? Why did I type get here? What's that called? I'm getting data, right, but it's going to match up specifically with what part of the web request? Post. Yeah, we definitely need to define a post type of route. So when I send a web request, there's different types of web requests, right? Get and post are two of those types. So when I type get, I'm saying look for the type of request that's coming through. If it's a get request, try to find a match. If it's a post request, try to find a match. So when I define a route inside my controller, there are two parts to it. The HTTP verb or the type of request and the actual URL. What does it look like? Does that make sense to you guys? So we know certainly that we'll need to define a post request. Um, so our form needs those two types in order to know how to make the HTTP request. It needs the HTTP type of request. Is it get? Is it post? Is it delete? Is it update? and it needs the URL that it's going to send to. Does that make sense? We need to construct the HTTP verb and the destination of the request. Just like when we define our controller routes. Get is the HTTP verb slash tweets was the actual URL. Okay, does anybody know how to do it in our actual form though? Can I do something like HTTP verb equals post? Is that how to do it? Troy? I'm supposed to do type, and that tells my application what type of web request to make, get, post, etc. What type of request are we making, Troy? Post. I don't think it has to be all caps. I think that's just my choice. And then how do I tell it what's the destination? It's a post request, but what's the name of the route that we want to send it to? Troy? Uh, action. action. Awesome. Now, we discussed earlier that the convention is that if I'm making a new cap, I would send a post request to slash if I'm making a new user, I would send a post request to slash users. So I'm already telling my form to send a post request. What's the URL? What's the destination? Awesome. Cool. So this will submit a post request to the tweets route. Do I have that route defined in my controller? I don't. AJ, can you walk us through it? Uh, yeah. It's get. It's get? I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, tweets. Awesome. And before I even worry about what goes here, what do I want to do? Finding.pry. Can I get to here? Thank you. Cool. So let's see if we can submit our form. Get rid of that weird little question mark. Make it nice and big so you guys can see. Will this work? Nothing's happening. Oh, that's weird. Something did happen. And I didn't hit my binding. And it looks like it sent a get request. I see this request in my terminal, get slash tweets. 
I'm I'm actually kind of surprised. I didn't expect that to happen. Let's see. Form type. Uh, not type, but method. Let's try that. Let's go to tweet slash new. Will this work? Awesome. I think we hit our binding because nothing is happening. And sure enough, we did. Cool. So it looks like we were a little bit wrong. When you define your route, it's method post to define the HTTP verb. And then the action part was correct. Action, the actual name of the URL. So now we've hit our binding. How do I see my form data? Where is it living? Where is it hiding out? Params. Beautiful. Oh, no, there's nothing there. That's weird. But I built a form. Do you guys know when you define a form, what part of the form does Sinatra use to construct your param key value pairs? Name. Name of what? Yeah, the name of the input field. So Sinatra can't take form data and put it into your params as key value pairs unless you give your input field a very special attribute called name. Name equals whatever you want the name of your param key to be. So this is the input for what? Message. So what might I want the key of my params hash to be called? Message. So let's give this input a name of message. And then Sinatra will be able to take this data, say, OK, cool, the input is named message. So I'm going to take this and make it the key of the hash. And I'm going to take whatever this person filled out in this input field and make it the value of the message key. Troy. Yeah. Yeah. The default is just a get request. Oh, Unless okay. you say otherwise, it's always going to try to make a get request, and that's why it made that request instead of a post request when we had this part a little bit wrong. So let's try that again because that did not work. Cool. Let's see if we have params now. Oh, actually, I don't think that will work because I didn't refresh the page. Beautiful. What if I wasn't sure if the code that I was writing in my file was constructing my HTML correctly? Can we come and look at the finished HTML? Yeah, let's inspect the element and let's look at our form. Let's see what it looks like. Cool, so here's our form. You can see that the method is post, that the action is slash tweets, we have our input with a name of message and our placeholder. And we even have our submit button. So this is a good tool to use to make sure that your form is getting built out properly. I feel pretty confident about this. I think that because we have a name now for our input, if we hit submit, I expect to see params with a key of message and a value of whatever we fill out here. We're in our pry. Let's look at params. And sure enough, We've got message, and we have the value of our input. Questions so far? Yeah, Mahadi. Does Sinatra take care of all of the insertion of the button? Does Sinatra kick to, uh, does this actually do the HTML thing? Yeah, let's go. Can you click that button? Can you make sure that it was the submit button for the form? Not just like a random button, as we said earlier, that happened to say submit. It's going to use the instructions in the form to send the request. And the instructions live right here. It's a post request to slash tweets. And then Sinatra is going to take care of collecting the info from the input and using it to build the parameter hash. But it can only do that if you've named your input. It's going to take the name of the input and make it into a key of the params hash. And it's going to take the value of that same input to be the value of that key. Yeah, so before when we had no name here, our params are totally empty, even though our form is totally valid. So it doesn't mean like, it's like that line two is telling it, okay, submit a new actually click. Exactly. Yep. Cool. Okay, so let's make our new tweet. How do I make a new tweet? Tweet, tweet.create. What does a tweet have? A message. Where is the message? Params what? Awesome. Let's see if that worked. Beautiful. New tweet is saved and everything. Since I know that works, I'm prepared now to take this line and put it into my controller. So again, we're doing this workflow of breaking it down into really tiny steps, playing around with it in the controller. Cool. After somebody creates a new tweet, 
And this is a little bit more like we get to make this decision, right? There isn't a strict right and wrong answer here. After someone submits that form for a new tweet, what do we want our user to see? The new tweet, probably, right? And that's normally how it works, right? You fill out a form to create a new thing, and then you go look at your finished product. I could have said, once they make a new tweet, I want to bring them to the tweet index page, show them the list of all the tweets. That's totally fine. I'm leaning slightly more towards, if you make a new tweet, you want to go look at that tweet. It's show page. So let's redirect. Do you guys know how to redirect on Sinatra? No. I actually always get this wrong. I think it's redirect. Is it just redirect? We're going to find out. OK, let's pretend that the redirect method is totally correct and there's nothing wrong with it. It might not be, but we'll fix that in a moment. What's the URL that I want to send my, my user to if I want to take them to the show page? Tweets. Yeah, tweets slash. How do I get the ID in there, Andrew? Let's do this. Yeah, but let's interpolate because it's a string. Beautiful. So I can simply redirect to the route that shows us the tweet show page, which we know is tweet slash the ID of the tweet. As long as I store my new tweet in a variable so that I can ask it for its ID, I'm good to go. I'm not 100% sure on this redirect. I think it might be redirect space to. Awesome. Like that? Is it, are you sure it's not an underscore? Uh, yeah, it's underscore. Yeah, it's in the top. Okay. Like this? Yeah. This can't be right. That looks so I weird. Think I think it's just redirect. But we're going to find out. It might be wrong. Okay, let's hit exit. We're going to go back to, we did make that tweet, by the way, in the terminal. So if I were to look at tweets, I should now see two tweets here. So perhaps I'm trapped in a binding. Nope. Cool, so I've got sup, and good job, guys. You guys are so smart. All right, let's make a new tweet, and let's see if we get redirected. I have a feeling we won't be. Um, will this redirect work? I don't know. All right. Oh, my God, it totally worked. We're on the tweet show page. Cool, so just to recap, right, we submitted our form. It ended up at the post slash tweets route. We use the content of params, which were created with our form data, to make a new tweet. And then we use the redirect method, giving it an argument of the URL we wanted it to take us to. And we wanted to go to the tweet's show page, so we grabbed the ID of the tweet we just made to fill out our dynamic segment. OK. No. <laughs> Skylar. Can you say that again? It doesn't need that symbol. Why not? Am I going to a view from here? What's the next line of code that's going to be run after line 30 runs, Skylar? Uh, like, no. Because this is basically this is making a web request. It's saying redirect me to the route that matches up to tweets slash ID. Where is that at in this file? Um, I'm not sure what you're saying. You're yeah. saying that you give an instance variable because you're calling it again in that method, and she's saying that they're redirecting to this other method. <laughs> yeah, so basically, to sum that up, right, when we call redirect to the URL, we're not going to a view page yet. We're sending a web request to tweet slash one, tweet slash two, tweet slash three. When we send a web request to tweet slash whatever, where do we go? What line of code gets hit? Colby. Can you say that again? Yeah, which is where in this particular file? Yeah, so it's line 22. So then line 24 runs, and then we render the file. So line 30 is making a web request to whatever URL you tell it to redirect to. When we make a web request, that request is received by our controller. So we find the route that matches and run the code in that block. We are not rendering a view file at the end of our post route. We are making another web request to go to tweet slash some ID, which runs this code that on line 22. Logan. Uh, can you go to the tweet.rb for models? Tweet.rb for models. Tweet.erb? Uh, for whatever model you have to bring to class. Right here? Uh, so I basically see you're passing it. I'm passing it an argument. I'm passing tweet.create an argument of a hash. 
The hash has a key of message and a value of whatever the message is. We're able to do that because the tweet class inherits from active record base and acts as a direct line to our database table. Any columns that we have in our database automatically become adder accessors on our tweet model, and we can always initialize tweets, create a new with those key value pairs of whatever our adder accessors are. So when we call tweet.create in our controller, we're able to say message, and then params message is where the message value was living. If we want to go back and scroll up and look at our params, they looked like this. So params at message returns what? Yeah, just a string of good job, guys. So tweet.create message params message is going to get evaluated as tweet.create message good job, guys. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Awesome. Try. Um, I think you said this before, but the reason why we're doing the post request is the slash tweet is because that's convention. It's convention, yeah. Like, you don't want to be in charge of making up for yourself the name of every single route when that route is in charge of doing an extremely conventional thing that all web applications do. But you could name it whatever sure. you want. Sure, yeah, as long as you told your form to post there. So if instead of post twist, yeah, instead of post slash tweets, if I said post slash whatever I want, that's fine, sort of, other than that it's not a good idea. Right. As long as you come into new tweet and you say the action is like whatever I want. The redirect, the code inside actually makes a difference, right? Whether it's exactly, okay. yeah. On that mm -hmm. note, I mean, wouldn't it actually be better if it was whatever I want in this situation? Because if you were making just looking ahead, if you had something else posting to tweets. But the only responsibility that posting to tweets should have is creating a new tweet. Really? It's that's not, the convention. Not updating? No, that's going to be a separate route, which okay. we're not building right now. But you would define it. First of all, would it even be a post? It would be like a patch or a put, right? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions before we wrap up? OK. Cool. So you guys are going to go to lunch. We're going to give you guys some discussion questions. Um, we got a slightly late start, so we'll give you guys some discussion questions at like 1.15. Touches more or less on what we've covered here, the concept of restful routing, CRUD actions, building out forms. You guys will spend about a half hour on that with your table groups, and then you'll just move forward with some of the forms labs. Sound good? Okay, thanks.